So last time we left off by getting our players to spawn in the world, getting them moving around, and getting the names to show up. Now what I'm going to be showing you this time is this here, where we actually set up our enemies, get them to spawn in the world, and get them to move around. Now with that said, get ready to be bored because this is going to be a super long video, so let's get started right away. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to add a new scene and this is going to be our enemy scene. So we're going to start by adding a kinematic body 2D and we're renaming it to enemy. Then as a child of the enemy, we're going to add a sprite node. As another child of the enemy, we're going to add a collision shape 2D. And as another child, we're going to add a area 2D. Then with area 2D selected, we're going to rename it to hitbox. Then as a child of the hitbox, we're actually going to go ahead and add a collision shape to D. Then I'm simply duplicating the hitbox and renaming it to hurtbox. And I'm also going to rename the hitbox with a capital B just to be more consistent. And then with our sprite node selected, we're going to go down to our sprites and select the square.png and click and drag it into the texture field of our sprite node. Then we're going to go over to canvas item and then we're going to select self modulate and change the color to red. You can set it to whatever color you want. Then with the collision shape 2D selected, we're going to add a new rectangle shape 2D. Then we're going to zoom in and I'm going to turn in my snapping and my grid and I'm just going to resize the collision. Then I'm going to click on the drop down here for my collision shape and click on copy. And then I'm going to select the other collision shapes from my area to these that I added. And I'm simply clicking on paste. So do this both for the hitbox and the hurtbox. And that's pretty much our play our enemy setup. So with that, what we actually want to do now is actually save it. And we're going to save it in a new folder called enemy with lowercase. Uh, and then uh, we're going to make sure that the file name is also lowercase. So we're just doing this to follow go.styling guide. Then I have to actually go to my world scene. So go and open your world scene. And then we want to add a, as a child of the world, we want to add a node and we're simply renaming it to enemies. Then we're also going to add another normal node as a child of the world. And in this case, it's actually going to be called enemy spawn. Then that's pretty much does it for the setup of our world uh, besides the uh, position 2Ds that we're adding as childs of the enemy spawn. So go ahead and add a position 2D as a child of the enemy spawn and then simply do control D to duplicate a bunch of the position 2Ds and then move them uh, to wherever you want in your map and these are going to serve as your spawn points for your enemies. And that does it for the setup of our world. Now we actually want to go into the script. And for the script, we want to start off by doing a variable. So we're going to do var possible and we're going to call it possible destinations. So uh, the possible destinations, uh, we're actually not going to actually uh, declare a value for it yet. We're going to do it later on in the code. And then we're just specifying some on ready var variables. In this case, we're doing an on ready var destination is equal to enemy spawn and then on ready enemies is equal to dollar sign enemies and then in the function ready we want to do possible destinations is equal to destinations dot get children and then we actually want to set up a remote function that our server is going to call to actually spawn the enemies in our world so in this case it's going to be remote function spawn enemy and then we're pass we're passing the index and enemy name parameters to it so we're doing var new destination is equal to possible and it should be possible destinations. So uh, make sure you do possible destinations, square brackets, and then we pass the index inside the square brackets. Then uh, what we want to do is we actually want to do another variable. So we're going to do var enemy. And this should be our enemy instance. So we actually have to set up a constant. So we're going to set up a constant, call it enemy, and we're going to do equals to preload and then our enemy scene. So back in our function, uh, to get rid of that error, make sure you actually have the underscore for the new destination, not just a space. Uh, so that should fix the error. And then for the enemy variable we're setting up, it should be var enemy the underscore instance is equal to enemy dot instance. Then enemy underscore instance dot name is equal to enemy underscore name, which is the parameter we're getting from our server. So after that, we want to do enemies dot add child and we're passing enemy instance to it. Then we want to do the enemy underscore instance dot position is equal to new underscore destination dot position. So that's basically going to 
uh, spawn our enemies in one of the points that are on our map. Then we want to add a timer node to our world and we're going to use this to actually spawn our enemies. So we're just renaming the timer node to be enemy spawn timer. Then with the timer selector we're going to node signals and we're connecting a timeout node to the world or a timeout signal to the world. And inside the timeout signal we're going to do an RPC ID call to the server. So we're specifying the server with one and we're calling the spawn enemies function on the server. Then be, I'm just giving some spacing to the functions and just to make it more clean. Then with the timer selected we're going to inspector and then we actually want to set it to be auto load. So go into the inspector, turn on auto load and set the wait time to uh, whatever you want. In this case I'm setting it to 3 seconds so an enemy is going to spawn every 3 seconds. So now on my server, what I want to do is I actually want to add my enemy scene. So I'm just adding a new scene, and in this case it's just going to be a 2D scene, and I'm just renaming it to enemy, the same as I did on the client side. Then I'm simply saving it in a new folder called enemy, same as in the client. So make sure that it has the exact same path and the exact same name when you save it. And that pretty much does it for our enemy for now. Then we want to go to our world scene and we want to add a node. And this is going to be the enemies node that we have on our client as well. So that's where we're going to be spawning the enemies on our server. Then in the world, or in this case it's called game state, GD script. We want to start by specifying a const, and this in this case it's going to be enemy, it's equal to preload, and it's going to be our enemy scene. Pretty much the same as in our client. Then we're setting up the remote function that we're calling from our client. So remote function spawn enemies. Inside this function we want to do var enemy underscore instance is equal to enemy dot instance. So it's going to be pretty similar to our clients. So after that line we want to do var idx is equal to randi mod 4. And you can control click on randi to see what it does. It gives you some examples of what the output would be. But it's basically used to give us a random integer. So then we want to do enemy instance dot name is equal to str. And before I do anything I want to set up a new variable called var enemy underscore count is equal to zero. Then I want to also specify another var. And in this case it's going to be var max underscore enemies is equal to five. Which I'm going to be using to basically define how many enemies we can have at once uh, spawn in our world. And then in the str we want to pass the enemy count and then we want to do an if statement. So in this case it's going to be if enemy count is less than max enemies and then inside the if statement we want to do enemy count plus equals to 1. And then before I do anything I want to set up a new unready var and in this case it's going to be enemies is equal to dollar sign enemies. Then back in the if statement we're going to do enemies dot add child and we're going to add our enemy instance. Then I'm going to do an RPC call back to my clients where it's going to be calling the spawn enemy function on our clients and we're passing the index and the enemy instance dot name to it. And we're getting an error here because it should be max enemies not mac enemies so make sure you didn't make a typo there. And if we run everything, as you can see we should actually get our enemies to spawn. And there we go, our enemies are actually spawning which is pretty great. Now, uh, they should spawn in five different enemies, and the reason you only see four is because we actually don't have any movement right now, and the enemies are kind of stacking on top of each other, but there are actually five, so uh, just, just trust me on this even though you can't see it. So if we actually move our other player around, you can see that the enemies did actually spawn uh, in these exact same positions. Now back in our client, we're going to actually set up our enemies to actually be able to move. So in order to do this, I'm going to add a enemy script to my enemy. Make sure it's, you know, actually saved in the enemy folder. And then I want to start off by adding a const and it's going to be called max speed is equal to 80. You can set it to whatever value you think feels best. And then I'm making a new variable called motion is equal to vector 2.0 then var position underscore players, and then var target underscore players. And we're gonna define these uh, later on in our code, so don't worry. Then I wanna do on ready var players is equal to get underscore tree dot 
git underscore root dot find underscore node and I'm passing players inside the parentheses of the find node or whatever you call the node that you're actually spawning your players in and then I'm passing true and false to it you can control click on find node to read up more on what it does but basically I'm passing recursive as true and own as false then I want to set up another on ready var and in this case it's going to be world is equal to git underscore tree dot root dot git underscore node and we're passing our world to it. Then I want to set up a function ready. Inside the function ready, I want to do possible players is equal to players dot get children. Then I'm doing target underscore players is equal to possible underscore players square brackets and I'm passing zero inside the square brackets. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm getting the children of the players node and then I'm assigning the target player as the first player on inside that node. So then I'm doing function underscore physics process delta. Inside this physics process delta function, I'm doing var players underscore direction is equal to target underscore players dot position. And I'm actually changing target players to be target players since it makes more sense than uh, target players. Then I'm just subtracting the global position from the target player's dot position and I'm doing dot normalized on it so that the enemies don't move faster when they move diagonally. Then I'm doing motion is equal to motion dot move towards and then inside the parentheses I'm doing player underscore direction times max speed comma 300 times delta and actually I'm going to make a new constant and call it acceleration and we're going to set it equal to the 300 and instead of hard coding 300 there we're going to do acceleration instead. Then I want to do move and slide and we're going to pass motion to it and we're actually going to do motion is equal to move and slide. And we should actually get player movement if we actually run this now. So if we run everything such as our server and another instance of the game, our enemies should be spawned in and should actually be moving around. And as you can see, they are actually, in fact, spawning and moving around now. Now, the, as you notice, they're only chasing this player here, and that's because that's how we actually set it up on our code. Uh, it's only chasing the player that's the first child of the player's node that's in our world. And as you can see, it won't actually do anything right now with the other players that won't chase it at all. And it actually can't kill the player at all. We're going to add that functionality later. But for now, we actually have them moving around. Now, uh, let's actually make it so that we can actually randomize which player the enemies target. So, in order to do this in the ready function, I'm going to do an RPC ID call to the server. So, RPC ID 1, and we're calling the select target function on the server. Then, I'm going to set up a remote function, and in this case, it's going to be remote function select underscore player underscore target. And then I want to pass the index, so idx, into it. And then we want to do target underscore player is equal to possible underscore players. And we're passing the index to inside the square brackets. Now on our server side, in order to actually get the code to work on our client, we want to add a new script to our enemy scene. So go ahead and add a enemy script to it. And then in the actual script, you want to do on ready var players is equal to get underscore tree dot get underscore root dot find underscore node. So it's basically the same thing we did on our client. So we're getting the players node. We're passing true and false to it as well. Then we want to specify a function ready and inside the function ready we want to do randomize just because I don't remember if we've actually done this before or not. So just to be safe we're doing it here. Then we're going to specify the remote function we are calling from the clients. So we're doing remote function select underscore target so make sure it has the exact same name as we specified in the RPC ID back in the client. And inside the actual function we want to do var num underscore players is equal to players dot get children dot size and you can always control click on it to read up on what size does and then we want to do var player underscore idx is equal to randi mod num player so basically what we're doing here is we're getting a random number between zero and the number of players we have and then we're actually going to send this number to our clients to actually specify which what player the enemies are actually going to target so you want to do rpc select underscore players underscore target and we're passing the player underscore idx to it now if we actually run everything 
So if we run the server and we run uh, two instances of our clients, we will actually get our players to spawn and move around and they're actually going to select a player to target uh, randomly. So as you can see, those three enemies right there are targeting the player on the left side and then these other two enemies are targeting the player on the right side. And it is actually working now the enemies are not the brightest uh, they pretty much just follow the enemy in a straight line and they can get easily stuck on walls but it is actually working and you can actually implement uh, the movement for your enemies in a number of ways this is just one way of doing things so uh, feel free to use this way or feel free to use any other way of doing movement or the behavior for your enemy now uh, you can actually also uh, do it this way here so if I do if I select my enemy scene and I add as a child of the enemy I add another area 2d and uh, for this area 2d I'm actually gonna be calling it uh, player detection and what I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna basically use it to detect the player that's inside the area and then assigning the new targeted player to that player that's inside that area. So I just basically duplicated the collision shape from our hurt box and then I'm adding a body entered signal to the player detection area 2D. Then back in the code for the area or the body entered signal, I'm doing if body that is in group players or player not players and if it's if it is true then we're doing target underscore player is equal to the body that's entered the the detection area then in our players I'm adding the players to the player group then back in our enemy script what I want to actually do is I'm actually changing the collision shape to a circle shape because it's actually going to work better in this instance. So go ahead and add a circle shape and just resize it to whatever you feel it will meet your needs basically. And if we go ahead and run the server and two instances of our game and join the game, you will notice that the enemies will actually target the players randomly like it was before. But the only difference now is if a new player actually happens to come inside the player's uh, player detection area, then it will actually target the new player. And I will actually be demonstrating this with our second player here. So if I have this second player move close to one of the enemies that is targeting my other player, then the enemy will actually go ahead and target the new player and this works vice versa now I did make the collision shape for the det player detection area a little bit too small so go ahead and make it bigger uh, and it should work a little bit better and now uh, there is a slight issue uh, to keep in mind if you're gonna be using this uh, player detection for your enemies and that is uh, that uh, your enemy's movement or position can actually become a bit unsynchronized at times. Like right now it's actually pretty synced up. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now this isn't actually an issue with the other way of doing the enemy movement where it uh, just targets one given player at a time and it doesn't change at all throughout the match. But yeah, just keep that in mind. And with that said, we're done. So uh, we'll worry about any synchronization stuff later in a future video if we have to do it. But yeah, with that said, if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.